Recently, I switched browsers, which is an incredibly annoying process, and I'm not actually sure I'm getting much benefit in terms of privacy or whatever I wanted from it. But there was one surprising benefit I got from it. On my old browser, I had a plugin that made Reddit more usable in a lot of different ways. Uh, but that plugin is not supported by my new browser. I had been using the plugin so so long that I forgot what Reddit actually looks like. So I wasn't expecting it when I pulled up the front page and found that I could no longer just infinitely scroll with unseen posts just being added to the bottom of the page as I went. I thought that it was a minor thing, but almost immediately I noticed that I was no longer spending as much time on Reddit. I'd open it up, scroll to the bottom of the homepage, and instead of clicking on the next page, I just left. I don't run a tracker to see how much time I spend on various sites, but I am absolutely positive that my time on Reddit has cratered. And I am also positive that that's a good thing. I mean, I am missing nothing of value and I have more time now. It's a, it's a little thing, but it was a great reminder of how websites can become these time sucks that ultimately make our lives worse. And in my case, it was all thanks to a plugin that I sought out and installed myself. It's not even the way the site is designed. And not only was I wasting time, but I also may have been contributing to my own irritability, as I discussed back in January, and possibly my own dumbification, as recently detailed by John Byrne Murdoch in a piece for the Financial Times headlined, Have Humans Passed Peak Brain Power? Data Across Countries and Ages Reveal a Growing Struggle to Concentrate and Declining Verbal and Numerical Reasoning. Byrne Murdoch cites a few recent studies to defend his thesis. To start, the Program for International Student Assessment is a study that's been running since 2000, sponsored by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or OECD. Every few years, they administer tests to 15-year-olds around the world in order to measure their cognition. Over time, scores around the world have been dropping. You might be tempted to blame COVID for interrupting school, but the decline actually appears to begin in 2012. And that year lines up with a similar decline in literacy and numeracy in adults, as also measured by the OECD in their Program for the International Assessment of Adult Competencies. 2012 is also prominent in data gathered for the Monitoring the Future study, a survey originally created in 1975 and given each year to 8th, 10th, and 12th graders, that's around ages 13 to 18, college students, and young adults. Bern Murdoch notes that the number of 18-year-olds who report difficulty thinking or concentrating and trouble learning new things also began to climb around 2012. So what happened in 2012? Well, in the lead up to that year, there was a strong belief amongst conspiracy theorists that the world was going to end that December based on their own reading of the long form Mayan calendar. I'm serious, like it was a it was a big thing. Roland Emmerich made an entire movie about it. It was pretty bad, but fun. Uh, there, there were a lot of competing theories for how the world was going to end with some people betting on planet X colliding with Earth. Other people were more into the idea of magnetic poles switching. Emmerich, I think went with the super volcano underneath Yellowstone triggering like a catastrophic array of whatever. It was terrible. But what if the end of the world really did start happening in 2012, but it's just taking a little longer than those other possible apocalypses? Because the ultimate cause is something we might call the stupiding. For a variety of reasons, human intellect drops. We stop being able to pay attention to what's going on around us. A few years later, there's a U.S. election. We elect the stupidest person on the planet, yada, yada, yada. An ex-Fox News host gets drunk and accidentally sits on a button that launches nuclear missiles at Europe. As I said last year in response to Jonathan Haidt's latest fear-mongering book, there's no evidence to suggest that social media is literally rewiring children's brains to give them all depression. But Bern Murdoch does make a good point in separating the internet at large from these sites where information is paraded in front of our eyes at lightning speed with no meaningful user input required and with an infinite scroll to just keep it going. 
we may be training ourselves to stop actively participating in gathering and processing information. To take my Reddit example, I've now stopped mindlessly scrolling the infinite feed, which was just the subreddits that I chose to follow, but it was still that fire hose of images, headlines, and videos that I looked at without effort. And before I knew it, I had spent 30 minutes reading a bunch of strangers' opinions about what the best sandwich is or whatever. Now, if I visit Reddit, it's for a specific purpose. Like, I need to see a dachshund eating spaghetti. So I go to r slash dachshund, I see a picture of a dachshund eating spaghetti, and then I close that tab and I go back to work. It's a little harder, but it's also a little more rewarding. Bernd Murdoch ends his piece with the good news that our brains aren't devolving. We still have the same capacity to think that we did in 2011. But that's where I have to step in and be a bit of a killjoy. No, you know, natural selection isn't fundamentally changing our brains, but there is something that might be, and that's COVID. Last year, researchers surveyed 800,000 UK adults and found that people who had contracted mild COVID and recovered were, on average, after recovery, about three IQ points below people who had never knowingly caught COVID. Yes, we still exist somehow. People who reported persistent long COVID symptoms were six points behind. People who had to be admitted to the ICU for their COVID were about nine points behind. It's worth noting that they actually found a small advantage for people who had been vaccinated at least two times, which does make me consider whether or not at least some of these differences existed before the pandemic, meaning, you know, maybe smarter people were more likely to get vaccinated. And of course, you know, intelligence, depending upon how it's measured, is often tied to wealth. And wealthier people had a better chance to avoid COVID by working from home and having groceries delivered and things like that. That said, nine IQ points is substantial. And as the editors of the New England Journal of Medicine wrote about this study, there are known mechanisms for how COVID can screw up our brains. Studies involving humans and mouse organoids showed that SARS-CoV-2 infection induces fusion of neurons, which compromises neuronal activity. Studies involving humans have shown prolonged neuroinflammatory responses, structural abnormalities, and accelerated aging in the brains of persons with mild to moderate SARS-CoV-2 infection. The virus was present in brain tissue samples obtained during autopsy from persons who had severe COVID-19. Gut dysbiosis, dysfunctional hypothalamic pituitary response, and low serotonin-induced dysfunction in vagal signaling may also play a role in impaired cognition after SARS-CoV-2 infection. So yeah, there is actual evidence to suggest that we as a species are getting stupider. I mean, you know, besides the evidence that is the current state of the United States. Uh, but the good news is that you as an individual can fight this. Uh, you can wear a mask in public places during COVID spikes. You can get vaccinated. And, you know, you can try making small changes to your internet habits. You can delete apps that are sucking up all your time or use tools like screen time to force you to put your phone down. Of course, that is only if you want to not be stupider. Like, honestly, I'm starting to wonder if the sunshine truly is eternal in that spotless mind. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.